Uh, the first part of the event will be Elaine's presentation, uh, which shouldn't last more than, say, 15 minutes or so. Uh, Pete, please feel free to type in uh, your questions at any point during this session. Uh, hopefully, then, uh, we can get to the Q&A section after, after Elaine's presentation. We can get straight into answering uh, as many questions as possible. Uh, participants, please use the Q&A facility. You can start from now, getting in your questions as soon as you're ready, really. Uh, this will be similar for those watching on Facebook as well. Please, can you type in your your questions as soon as you want into the comment section uh, we will then do you want us to relay the questions to you Elaine or do you want to read the questions from Zoom I'm happy to read them from the chat is oh, that where they'll be yes yes th there is a Q&A facility at the, uh, at the bottom of your screen it, the, the yeah. questions should come through there if any come through the chat I'll, I can always um, yeah. tell them to you as well um, I'm just going to, we've also got Jess here from the Leaders Award team. I'm just going to pass over to Jess as she's going to just explain a little bit about uh, the Leaders Award. Um, if you were, if you're an engineer, what would you, you do competition? And she's going to, going to tell you kind of what it's all about. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, so like Alex said, my name is Jess and I'm from the Leaders Award team. Um, so the Leaders Award is a nationwide competition um, that we've been running for a, a numerous years now. Um, however, we usually run it um, in schools. So um, what it does is it's a STEM based competition. So science, technology, engineering and maths. And we ask students or pupils or children or young people, if you were an engineer, what would you do? Um, and we, we thought during the current situation, while many of us are working from home with many schools closed, what better time to invite all young people to look around them desi and design solutions to problems. So our national composition will be open a lot longer than it usually is um, to give you time to meet engineering professionals online and look for problems in the world and draw a solution to them. You can download um, free resources um, to help you along your journey um, by registering for the competition on our website. Um, and we'll be running these interviews twice weekly um, with an, an absolute extraordinary lineup of engineers. So our suggestion for the competition is that you make it a weekly challenge. So by interviewing engineering professionals online and looking for problems in the world you'd like to solve, then just before we all head back to school. You're going to choose which of your ideas is the best and then you're going to send it in to us for our engineering professionals to read. Um, so this is a great opportunity. Um, anybody who enters into this competition receives a certificate. So um, everybody gets something out of it. And um, we actually, we host um, award ceremonies, we host public exhibitions where we put on hundreds and hundreds of um, of examples of entries um, that have come into us for for parents to see, for friends to see. Um, it's a really great opportunity. So I hope you enjoy this journey um, and we'll pass over to Elaine to make a start now. Thank you, Jess. I'm just going to share my screen. I've got a few slides with a few photos on there. So let me just do that. and hopefully you can see my presentation. So I'm going to today talk to you about my story, my journey in engineering, where it started and where I am now, what I do now, and also tell you a bit about what engineering is, what it could mean for you. So hopefully you can still see me, you can hear me, and you can see the slides in front. Yeah, that's all good, Elaine. Great. So it actually started Probably when I was about five, six, I clearly remember I had this pirate Lego set. And looking back, actually, this was quite crucial in my um, love of engineering and my aptitude development as well. So Lego and construction toys, uh, Meccano or anything like that, can help you understand 3D shapes, how they work, how things come together the sense of satisfaction you get when you build and create something as well is immense, especially if you've got little pulleys, you've got different things that you can move around and you can be so creative with these toys. And actually while playing and while creating, you're learning, you're developing your skills that are very useful for engineering. So you could even say that this type of play is learning. 
just something to bear in mind. Now, as I grew up uh, and went to secondary school, and then later I went into a year in industry scheme, I got to participate in various different science, technology, engineering and math fairs. So in the picture, you can see Chel Cheltenham Science Festival. You probably hopefully heard of the Big Bang Festival, Imagineering, all these different events when they're allowed to happen. You get to meet lots of different types of engineers or scientists or mathematicians um, and get to see how these fields help humanity to progress, to move forward, to improve people's lives and just how things work all around you. I do recommend checking out all those organisations and I'm sure they all have online um, webinars as well, just as primary engineers. So that's one way you can find out more. And to give you my understanding of engineering, I go back to the definition of what engineer means. And it comes from a Latin word, which is inventor or designer. So if you remember when I talked about the Lego, I talked about being creative. Um, and these two kind of words, inventor, designer, also add to that. Obviously, maths and science are very important, but so is the design aspect. In terms of types of engineering, there are so many. I'm going to choose um, four images to help you understand what they could be. So the first one is an electric car or any car. It requires automotive engineers, it requires systems engineers, and it requires mechanical engineers. You need to think about how the car will feel for the people sat inside, how it drives, how smooth the ride is. Now we want to think also about what it emits or doesn't emit because obviously the environment is very important and protecting that. Um, so if we are not emitting, if we're not burning fossil fuels within the car, then how does it charge? When does it charge? The charging network, and I'll talk to you more about that because that's where I, my, my job comes in. But there are also people who do civil structures, so bridges to get across waterways, um, on all kinds of infrastructure. So road networks need designing, they need to think about how people move where they live, where they work, where they go to school. So civil uh, engineering is another great field. In this picture, we can see lots of different phones. So we've got electronic engineering. We've also got software engineering. Um, all those apps that you might use, maybe you, you've uh, recently gone to TikTok or Facebook, all those were written by software engineers. And there's so many different things that you can do there as well in terms of the design of the physical device or the apps within it. And this final picture shows chocolate. Engineers are really crucial to getting all those bars of chocolate out into the supermarkets and to the corner shops because we need chemical engineers, we need manufacturing engineers, process engineers to make sure that the chocolate bar is the same every time you buy it and that is produced at the right rate so that you never run out of chocolate. So, Engineering is really important for all those different things around um, our lives and many more that I've not listed on this slide. So it's a really great uh, field to go into where you have lots of opportunities afterwards. So my journey, I chose engineering and I chose the University of Warwick. Um, I did a four year degree, um, but nowadays there's so many different options. You can do three year bachelor degree, four year master's degree. Uh, you can do apprenticeships uh, to choose a specific company that might sponsor you through your study and you can work at the same time. There's lots of different ways to go into engineering. Uh, so I spent four years at Warwick where I did some general engineering and then I focused on systems engineering. And also in that time, I got to travel to Tanzania. So this is with an organisation called Engineers Without Borders. And we went to Tanzania to build a renewable energy system for a, a school and a, a girls boarding school in the northern region of the country, which is very close to the Serengeti National Park, which if you've seen Lion King, that's where it's based. So the, the lions and the, the pride uh, rock that's in that film comes from Serengeti in Tanzania. So we spent about um, three weeks, just over three weeks, 
teaching them how to create these wind turbines that you can see in the back of the picture there. Uh, we carved the blades out of wood, we made the rotors and the stators um, from copper um, and made it with the people of the community so that when, if a blade fractures in the wind, they know how to take the turbine down, replace the blade, and they can generate electricity. You can see solar panels on the roof there as well. So all the electricity that's generated there helps that boarding school to have light in the evening so they can study in the evening and they don't have to use candlelight and it allows them to charge their mobile phones and we donated some laptops as well so they can start learning some IT skills. Being out there in Tanzania, I was so aware of how engineering can help and it does help our lives. Um, so with things like washing machines, you don't have to spend time manually washing all your clothes. With dishwashers, you don't have to manually wash every single dish. It happens automatically. It saves up time that you can then spend on whatever you like, improving yourself, um, seeing your friends, family, entertainment. There's many things in which engineering really does improve our lives. And for these girls as well in that boarding school, it allowed them to get better grades because they were able to study later into the evening and during the day they had to be out um, doing all these things manually um, so that was a really valuable experience for the community uh, in, the, in setting up the renewable energy scheme and for the school pupils as well. Now so I've spoken a little bit about renewable energy and I want to talk to you a bit more about this because it's the field that I'm in so there's energy and electricity most of uh, our energy and uh, our electricity even has come traditionally and in historical times from these three sources, coal, oil, natural gas. And I think uh, hopefully you all know that they're called fossil fuels. They're hydrocarbons. They're made through millions of years of compacting um, fossils. Um, and we're burning them so fast that, as you know, it's releasing too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, causing global warming, climate change, and various um, extreme weather conditions that you see on the news. So to, to decarbonize, we have some solutions and we're working to implement these faster and faster. So for generation, we go to renewable energies like wind, like solar. Um, there's other renewable energies as well, like hydro geothermal. So we have those technologies, it's about rolling them out and making sure the network can facilitate them. In terms of transport, so cars traditionally use petrol or diesel and we know that they uh, emit um, carbon dioxide emissions and greenhouse gases. We can switch to electric, electric cars which charge on the networks and we, can, we know that we can generate electricity from renewable sources to um, to power our electricity networks. Heating, again, instead of using uh, fuels like coal um, or natural gas, which is also a fossil fuel, we can go to electric uh, technologies such as heat pumps or electric heating off the network as well. And these are things that the country wants to do, but we need to think about a couple of other things as well, as well as making the energy green, which is obviously very important for the environment. We need to think about the human aspect. So the cost, how will it, how will it affect build? We need to make sure that people don't sink down into poverty because of build going up too high. As well as that, we need to think about the re reliability of the power supply. So if obviously sol solar energy is only generated during the day, not in, in the night, so how do we make sure that we don't have a power cut at night? How do we keep the energy available for people to use in the night if they need it? So these three things we have to think of together. We can't just do one action, with uh, change all the energy to green energy without thinking about the other two. And this is particularly hard with the electricity networks because they're getting a lot more complex. The image on the left shows what the electricity networks used to look like. And you can see there's one large power station at the top. It feeds electricity down the voltages to people's homes. And it's kind of a one-way flow, quite simple. 
Now we have lots of different types of energy being generated, not just at the very high voltage, but also at a lower voltage. So even on people's homes, we have solar panels. Um, and we now have electric cars, which are pulling a lot more energy from the network. But there's definitely opportunities there. So electric cars could also potentially feed electricity back into the network if required. They could, they're essentially a large battery, so you could use them to store the energy from the sun and use it at night. There are lots and lots of opportunities and lots of um, clever engineers, scientists, um, and other people in this industry working to solve that energy trilemma, to make things run smoothly, at low cost and reliably. And my area of focus has been about electric cars and how they will change the networks and how we can make sure that both the people driving the electric cars and other people just using the electricity network have fair access to energy and that the prices uh, remain stable and that um, everyone can benefit from electric cars and the, how nice they are to drive, how they are low emissions. So these are three projects, uh, national projects that we've worked on because if you think about it, a taxi driver drives at their car very differently to um, maybe you or your parents or your neighbours and there's all different kinds of uh, journeys that different people will make. Um, so maybe Monday to Friday, normally you'd have one type of journey. At the weekend, you might have a different type of journey. Depending on how close you live to work or where you work, that will change. Um, so we need to consider all these different use cases and projects. Also with work, because these problems are global, they're not just um, for the UK, global warming is a global problem, it's in the name. Um, I, I, through work, I spent six months in Australia helping the, uh, our branch, our branch of the business out there to solve similar problems. So in that time, I was able to speak to people about what we'd learned in the UK, how we were dealing with things in the UK. We de developed a model for Australia to work with. And that was a really great experience, not just from the work and career side, but as with in Tanzania, we got to go to the safari where Lion King was made. In Australia, I got to see some kangaroos and koalas. So with engineering, you get so many opportunities to travel and um, talk to different kinds of people and experience different experiences. That's another reason why engineering is great. Um, but to me, it goes back to this solving these different problems that are happening um, around the world. There's so many opportunities as well to get the boat best to benefit everyone in society with the changes that are happening by balancing everyone's energy needs. So I hope that that's useful to you, that you've learned something um, and I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Elaine, for that. That was brilliant. Really, really good uh, insightful into engineering. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for a few few questions to come through on the Q&A section. If you could open that up, I think, Elaine, then you can kind of read them as they come through on there. I'll look at the chat section, see if any come through there. And um, Jesse's going to be looking on Facebook to see if any come through on the comment section there. I've just got a bit of a question uh, first uh, for you. Uh, so what made you want to become an engineer in the first place? Yeah, so I enjoyed the building with Lego, playing with Lego. I enjoyed maths. I thought it was um, very structured, very easy to, to get better at maths. I found that quite um, kind of easy for me. Uh, it wasn't always easy, but it was easy that if you try, 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 you will get better and um, I could see kind of the progress in math. Uh, I did also enjoy sciences, science experiments um, that my parents might do, do with me or even at school. Um, I had a really great physics teacher as well who encouraged us and who showed us through various different initiatives what 
uh, engineering could be. And we, I met when I was at school, lots of different types of engineers. And I thought this is definitely an area I want to explore further, especially because there are so many different opportunities. So even though by the point I went to university, I didn't know exactly what type of engineer I wanted to be. I knew that there was many things I could do by choosing to study engineering. So I can see a few questions coming in on the Q&A. So I'll, the first one is, which countries do you think are dealing with changing energy to renewables best? Very good question. And there's um, a great app actually for this, um, an interactive world map that shows you the amount of generation uh, by country that's renewable and from all the different types of uh, fossil fuels. And really high up there in terms of renewable energy generation is New Zealand, for example. Um, I believe Norway is also quite high. Germany, interestingly, interestingly have a lot of solar energy. Um, so there's, there's many countries. The UK is actually reasonably well. I don't know if you've seen on the news, we've had a few um, days and even weeks with no coal fired power stations running. So it's um, a lot more wind here. Uh, so yeah, every, every country is moving hopefully closer to that goal. We've got lots of questions, so I'll move on. When a person thinks of an idea but is not an engineer, can they still pass it on to real engineers to work on and make it real? Absolutely. I think to, in this day and age, we need to work together with people that aren't engineers. So um, we do a lot of work with uh, um, market research people, people who understand psychology and human behavior, because that's really important in designing the correct technical solutions. Um, and a lot of startups have people from different fields as well working together. So yes, that's very important. We do work with non-engineers as, as well. What part of your work do you think has had the biggest input on their specific community or country? Very interesting question. Um, so a project that I've done recently was about building a smart grid architecture model. Uh, hopefully that makes some sense in each of the words. So a model that represents what the network should look like. And in that model, we represented what different organizations roles would be in, in, a, in a future where we need more flexibility on the network uh, and where we have more renewable energy and low carbon technologies. Um, where people choose to have low carbon technologies on their homes. Um, so we represented what each different role, whether it's government, whether it's the electricity networks, whether it's gas networks, whether it's customer advocates, what role they would play in this new world. And I think that really helped to bring all these different players um, together in one um, forum because we have workshops to, do, to develop this and to disseminate this and also um, in terms of the actual um, output of this the model is viewed online viewed on the open networks project so that helps everyone to come together on that so that's one project that has had hopefully a big impact on the country um, so that that was the same project in the uk and australia as well um, can you give me the name of the app i will look for it and let you know yes what subjects would it take to be an engineer so the main one that's absolutely essential is maths, then physics is the next most useful. And then depending on what type of engineering you might um, like to do, chemistry, um, there's subjects like further maths as well, biology. Um, I also did a, a, in my uh, studies, I did geography, I did um, I, IT during my GCSEs. In uh, A-levels, I did English and French because everything is useful and you do learn um, at university as well the subjects that are most relevant so um yeah just follow it just following on from that elaine um do you have kind of apprenticeship schemes at, at your place of work um so at my place of work there's uh, four main dif four different departments the side i'm in is the consultancy side um, I believe that the, the side where we do um, on-site surveys and we do um, so of uh, electrical sites, they may do apprenticeships. I'm not 100% sure, um, but that's something I can find out. 
I know um, in the Northwest where I'm based, there are other companies, BA Systems definitely do apprenticeships. Um, so uh, I think World Voice do apprenticeships. So uh, yeah, I'm not right. sure about- Thank you very much. Well. We're quite small, but- Thank you, uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, do you think we will all use electric cars in the future? Yes, absolutely. Um, the government are bringing in bans on fossil, uh, on petrol and diesel cars. Um, I think that's moved to 2035 now, so you won't be able to buy a new electric, uh, a new petrol or diesel car after that date. Um, I think people are realizing that the total cost of ownership. So even though an electric car might be more expensive upfront, you save so much on fuel, um, and you save on other things like road tax. Um, that overall, it does even the price is better as well as obviously some other factors about electric cars and um, the price will come down as well the more cars are produced and the more the factories can um, gen uh, produce more electric cars they are actually really nice and smooth to drive they're quiet so i do think electric cars are the future um, and you can charge them at home as well so you don't need to go anywhere and um, that that's really helpful we're just going to pass over Elaine to uh, Jess uh, if she's looking at Facebook comments. Uh, yeah. Jess, have we got any questions that come through on there? So um, why is engineering so important in school and what, what skills does it teach you as a young person? Um, so engineering is really important because of the uh, skills it teaches you. So it teaches you to problem solve, it teaches you to be creative, it teaches you to look into how things work, um, to understand them, to be able to solve the problems. And um, it helps you to have an appreciation of the world around you. And so I'm, the chair I'm sitting at the table in front of me, the laptop in front of me, the, the internet network, all these things um, help society, help each of our lives. And I think that, that they're the benefits of um, developing an understanding of engineering uh, from school. Brilliant. I think we've got um, oh another question in, in the Q&A section. Q &A. Uh, yeah. How long have you been an engineer and have you any other interests other than energy? Uh, good question. So I um, graduated from university almost five years ago, four and a half years ago. Um, so I've been an engineer since then uh, and in terms of other interests other than energy, good question. Um, so broadly about sustainability and reducing waste, um, from a systems perspective, circular economy is a very interesting concept that I think hopefully there'll be more thought put into as we progress with what we're learning from this lockdown period. Um, about community and the role of the economy within the community and within the environment. Um, so being um, more aware of what resources we're using and things like that. A uh, couple more questions have come up. So do you think as well as increasing the amount of renewable energy plants, increasing the efficiency of power conversion will play a factor in trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Absolutely. So we don't want to just generate more energy. We want to um, increase the efficiency of the appliances as well within the home so that our demand is less. But as you say as well, increasing so the same uh, plant, the same, uh, if that can generate more electricity, if we can get more uh, useful energy out of that generator, then that's a really valuable step forward as well. So from a systems perspective, it's not just about each kind of device, it's about how the whole, uh, all these devices and components work together to produce the best outcome. So there's many ways we can do that. Um, the next question, how long have you been, oh, sorry, that one's been answered, yes. Um, so the, the app, unfortunately, I don't have it to hand, but I can have a look and uh, maybe I, if I find the Facebook uh, link, I can comment on there with the, the link to use that app. Uh, I've just got a question from Facebook. Um, is there 
on on the top of on the back of that question of have you any any, any other interest in energy um is there any other part of engineering you would like to explore in the future uh, good question. So software engineering, I think, is really interesting and data science. So they're all, uh, they're, the two are related and it's about understanding um, and various different data sets and representing them, showing them in a way that's useful to um, the audience and helps them understand and helps them do something with it. So. Um, for example, the idea behind smart meters was to help people understand uh, how they use their energy. Um, there are other apps like this World Map um, app that shows you, because obviously the amount generated by different sources changes each minute, even depending on what the demand is, depending on how uh, bright the sun is shining or how um, heavy the wind is blowing. So showing that in a way that helps people understand what's going on around them is really useful. So potentially some app development, and that could be uh, things to do with even health. So um, maybe understanding uh, if anybody has a Fitbit, maybe that the app that shows you your sleep patterns or the your activity in terms of exercise, how that contributes to your health. Maybe things like food intake as well. Uh, in terms of vitamins, minerals, calories, there's many different um, avenues where you could use data science to help um, all sorts of different fields. I think we've just um, got a few that have come through there on the Q and A section, Elaine. Yeah. So the first on there is what, why, what type of renewable energy do you think will be used the most in the future? So good question. I would say it's not one type of renewable energy. We do need a mix of them because they um, generate electricity at different times of the day. Um, and it's really important to have a diversity of generation. Um, and I think this point about diversity is really important in the field as well. So this relates to the next question. Is there lots of opportunities for women in engineering or can it be more difficult? Diversity is really important in many things. So. In the electricity networks, it's important to have a diverse range of generation at all different voltage levels all around the country, especially when you switch to renewables. Um, it's really important in demand. If everybody turned on all their appliances at exactly the same time, the network isn't designed for that and it wouldn't be able to cope. Um, but we know that that's not going to happen. People have very different lifestyles, or even slightly, even if it's slightly different. If uh, I eat my dinner at six p.m. and somebody else eats it at six fifteen or six twenty, the the fact that we're using our ovens and our electric cobs at different times helps the network. And the same with electric cars and other devices. So diversity in demand is really important. There might be somebody that does night shifts, so they don't use their um, uh, they use their electricity in the day instead of the, the evening. Um, so diversity in supply, diversity in demand, diversity in the workforce is really important because it, it allows different types of thinking, different perspectives to be brought into the equation. When we're thinking about the problem, we make sure we solve it from all different perspectives. So definitely uh, women engineers are very important. They're, we are still a minority. Um, so the statistic is about one in ten are of uh, one in ten engineers are female, um, but there's lots of opportunities, as many as uh, for men as there are for women, and there's lots of networks as well to support women who might feel like I'm the only woman in the room. What do I do? Am I okay to do whatever? That I'll speak in front of everyone. Um, sometimes women can feel a bit less confident if they're the only woman in the room so there's lots of support networks for women engineers um, to give them the confidence to do what they need to do for them to do their job very well so that's really positive positive. Um, how long would it take to be an engineer so there are many different routes my route was uh, after my a levels i did four years at university but that was a master's degree because i wanted to become chartered um, and it helps me to become a chartered engineer a little bit quicker. 
but you could do a three-year degree and go straight into um, work or you could do an apprenticeship um, I think that could be from age 16 as well so you start working straight away um, and kind of learning alongside that. I've just got a question here on the back of that Elaine um, what does it mean to be a chartered engineer? Good question so in engineering, like in other fields like accountancy or in medicine, we have institutions. I'm a member of the Institute of Engineering Technology. There's a different one for mechanical engineers or civil engineers or chemical engineers. So I'm a member of the IET, Institute of Engineering Technology. And the chartered engineering process is about showing your competency in uh, five different competency kind of categories. Some of them are technical, some of them are about ethics, some of them are about leadership or communication. So the chartership shows that you've uh, demonstrated experience you, uh, in each of those competencies and you've been signed off by a panel of experienced engineers to show that you have all those competencies. Um, it gives you some letters after your name, so the CN means that you're chartered. And it also means that if, you, if you're working around the world, people understand what, what kind of level you're at, because obviously engineering degrees in different countries are slightly different. So the chartership helps um, make it clear what level you have reached. That one. Um, there's three more uh, questions. This is great that there's lots of questions. So um, do you work in a team with other engineers and are their jobs different to yours? Uh, yes, I do work in a team with engineers and everyone um, has their own area of expertise or um, their own um, kind of knowledge bank. So we all come together to um, develop these projects that have multiple different uh, components to them. So um, if there's a project where we need to think about electric cars and heat pumps and uh, maybe energy regulation, uh, we need to bring obviously different people. It's, in the modern day, it's really useful to have a broad perspective on all the different components, but it's also really important to have um, people who are ex ex have expertise in specific areas. So we do always have multi kind of disciplinary teams or people with different types of experience within a project team. In terms of the day to day work in the consultancy side, it's quite similar in terms of lots of um reading reports or analyzing data or speaking to um different organizations project partners or the client and understanding a bit more about how to move things forward um in in other types of engineering there might be more traveling to site um, we do a lot of workshops with um various different people um, including stakeholders that are important to the project. Um, in other types of engineering, you might travel to site, you might work on a factory line, you might uh, um, do some more kind of interactive hands-on work as well. What field of engineering is involved in the army? Good question, and I'm not an expert on this, but I am pretty sure that there's lots of different types of engineering involved in the army. I have definitely seen that there's electrical engineers in the army um and i'd have to pass on what else i know there's many others so obviously they have uh, the raf have planes so they're aeronautical engineering um and i'm sure there are many others i'm sure hopefully one of the other speakers might be able to tell you about that what's the best thing about being an engineer i think uh, the ability to contribute society to benefit society in a way that's at scale. So there might be one thing, as an engineer, you could design a device, let's say a medical device. Um, you could create, let's take a today's situation, you could create um, a 3D printer that would print hundreds or thousands of face shields that will protect the frontline workers. So that one device that you've created has helped thousands of people. Um, that, so that's one example. And in everything, there seems to be this multiplicative, um, multiplying effect on the benefits of what an engineer can do. 
I think it's really powerful that we can make um, people's lives better. That would be my my best thing about being engineering, but everyone will have something different. I just got one on Facebook. Um, do you think renewable energy could be a good theme for an invention idea when doing the Leaders Award? Yes, definitely. How would you put that into, um, if, like, if you were to make an invention for the Leaders Award, using renewable energy what what would it be so you could think about how uh, if you how renewable energy would be integrated with a design for a different house for a design for a school maybe a design for a car um, a design for if you integrate it with uh, something else in in your life uh, it might help you think of something a creative way maybe even a boat uh, how could you integrate renewable energy? So you know the, the basic stuff, wind turbine, solar panels, but maybe you could come up with a design that implements those renewable energies with other um, other things in, in life. To so have a brainstorm, have a think about all the different things that uh, you could implement renewable energies with, and I'm sure you can come up with a few sketches or designs. Hi, Elaine. Um, I know you kind of talked about in your presentation that you went to, say, Australia. Um, to uh, Is that your favourite place you've been to for work or is there another place that you've enjoyed going to as well? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, as well as Australia and Tanzania, I've been to Madrid on conferences. Um, I've been to Scotland. I've been to Ireland. Um, various places. I think Australia is probably my favourite because I spent the longest time there. So I got to explore uh, different parts of Australia. Um, I got to go on lots of nice hikes. Um, I was in Brisbane in Queensland. So I got to see the Gold Coast, the Sunshine Coast, and there's lots of national parks there with really beautiful nature. Um, so I really appreciated that time out there and um, really interesting to see how a different country approaches um, their energy kind of sector and the things that need to happen there. And also even just the cultural differences, you kind of think Australia, they still speak English, so it shouldn't be too different, but I noticed some cultural differences, which were um, very interesting and refreshing kind of approach to life. Um, so I really enjoyed that. I got back about a year ago and I was just looking through my photos recently as well and really um, reminiscing on what a great experience it was and what uh, interesting people I met and uh, all the things I learned not just in engineering but in life in general so yeah really um, value that experience of spending time um, with the team in Australia. It seems like a career that can take you to kind of lots of different places, doesn't it? So uh, I think that's really exciting, especially for our uh, young engineers that are kind of watching today. Um, yeah. Just talking about the Leaders Award like we did before, um, what kind of skills do you think it, it, it develops in young children and in primary schools and secondary schools? Yeah. So uh, engineering helps. Um, I think I've said some of this a little bit, but I, um, I can say it again. So in terms of creativity, in terms of problem solving, um, and these are skills that are really useful in life in general. There'll be problems in your life that you want to solve, and you'll think about different ways of approaching them, different um, people that might be able to help you with. And that's very similar to what we do in an engineering job. So you think about the people that will be helpful, that will provide some expertise, some knowledge. You'll think about how to integrate all that, that different knowledge, those different perspectives to provide a solution that you, that you then make sure meets the needs of whoever the customer is. Um, so those skills, uh, the analysis, analytical skills, understanding what to look at, what is important when considering the problem, because there's there's many aspects to a problem and some of them are not significant or not as important as other aspects. So being able to um, engineering judgment, uh, provide engineering judgment on a particular problem and a particular solution to come up with the best way forward is really important because there's never, in life, there's never a very easy right or wrong or, um, to a problem. There's, many different options so 
being able to assess which one's the best and being able to present that um, as the way forward and being able to implement that and make sure that the benefits you thought would ha happen do happen is really important and can be applied in many different ways. So I would say they are the main best. Fantastic. Um, just coming away from it a little bit from engineering, what, what do you kind of do away from engineering to kind of de-stress Elaine? Yeah, um, so I think this is a really good point and for anybody that's not sure about engineering, what I would say that is anyone that's an engineer is also so many other different things. So for, for myself, I done some, I enjoyed doing some running and some triathlon events, so I do that type of things. I really enjoy music, attending concerts or gigs when that can happen. Um, I go to a lot of festivals usually, um, so I enjoy that. Um, I enjoy dancing as well, so I've done some Latin and ballroom dancing. I've done, um, when I was at university, I did some street dancing. I've done all different kinds of dancing. I enjoy things like cooking. I do like traveling as well. There's many different things. Um, each of my colleagues have very different interests as well. Some people like, um, I don't know, uh, art or um, knitting or crochet, or uh, some people like uh, gaming, or some people like, um, what else they like? But many, many different things that you can do outside of engineering that engineering helps you to do. So one thing I'd say is that in general, engineering is a, a, a quite a well-paid field as well. So that allows you to explore your other interests and hobbies um, and also to contribute back. So I quite like uh, finding there's so many different charities and initiatives, particularly at this time that I want to support. And I, I can do that because um, I have the, uh, the uh, money available to do that. So, um, yeah many many different ways why engineering is a good career in the long run as well did you did you just to go back to obviously looking at your interests and what you like to do outside of work um i i assume that's probably stemmed from your childhood as well um did you always know you wanted to be an engineer or was there was there other things that you perhaps wanted to focus on before you actually made your decision yeah yeah no i didn't know and i didn't even know what engineering was till i was maybe 15 16 so uh definitely didn't know that that's what i wanted to do until i even knew what it was and um, before i knew about engineering the the kind of things i'd thought about uh, i did various career quizzes when i was at school to try and help me um and some of the things that i'd thought about were things like setting up my own charity because i really enjoyed uh, and valued being able to help people. I, um, I'm trying to think back to that career quiz I did when I was at school. Um, but I did like uh, design. So actually one of the GCSEs I forgot to mention I did was graphic design. And I kind of thought about doing that at some point as well. Um, and I think some more kind of project management type uh, roles uh, were probably suggested to me when I did the careers quiz. Um, I think Pete, personal assistant, came up in one of those quizzes. Various different things came up, but engineering, uh, when I got to learn about it through about 16, when I did the Dragonfly Day, which is run by the Engineering Development Trust, I did the Head Start course run by the Engineering Development Trust as well, which is one week in university. I think. A when you're 16, 17 ish. Um, and that really helped me to understand the breadth of engineering and all the things you could do once you got that foundation in engineering. I think it's, I think it's quite important, uh, like you said um, before, Elaine, that you have like kind of lots of different hobbies. Um, and I think that's probably where most kind of ideas kind of stem from. Uh, yeah. when, and, and I think that's important for that kind of the young engineers as well, that you can, ideas can kind of come from anywhere, um, kind of problems can pop up from anywhere. I think that's, is that kind of where you get some of your ideas from, do you think? Yes, definitely. So one of the things, so I first started running, I'd say, uh, with a colleague at, in our lunch break. Um, and... It, on those lunchtime runs, we'd have so many ideas. Um, it just helps to change your mode of thinking when you're doing something else, when you take a step back. And that's when kind of 
you get new ideas and you it helps you to create these new ideas as well so yeah definitely doing those other hobbies is really important and really valuable as well because one other thing i'd say and i hope uh, and i think i don't know exactly the age of the audience but your mental health is really important so how um stressed or not stressed you feel how happy or not happy you feel and doing other hobbies is really important to help you maintain that and to help you keep a balance in life so um yeah definitely um so i don't know if you caught the beginning of of the interview where we sort of spoke about the how we've how we've changed and evolved the the competition to suit the current situation with everybody at home um so we're looking at our our suggestion to the young people that are possibly listening to this interview is to is to make it a weekly challenge to come up with something new each week do you have any advice perhaps to those people of how to generate their ideas yeah yeah definitely so um one thing a couple of pieces of advice i can give one is to have a notebook where you keep all your ideas and you can keep that notebook maybe beside your bed or just if it's small enough you can maybe carry it around or um, somewhere that's within easy reach so whenever you have an idea you can write it down and those ideas can be as silly as you want if you think they're silly they might not be so it's important to write down every single idea uh, that's one thing the other thing I would encourage is to have um, little activities for yourself where you might think of a particular task and your uh, the, the, the ta so let's say um, designing a clock um, and then you spend a fixed amount of time whatever that may be let's say half an hour maybe even an hour and you try and fill as many pages with different designs as you can and that and through that process you'll start being more creative so originally you'll just probably draw a round clock but then you might start thinking about different shapes maybe you might go to 3d you may think about different colors different sizes uh, different uh, clock hands different numbers there's so many different things that you can do so if you um, do like a simple e exercise whether it's just one thing that you're trying to design in as many different ways as possible um, and make sure that you spend a good chunk of time on this it'll help get the creative juices flowing so to speak so there are two activities that i would recommend two kinds of things to make sure that you capture all your ideas and that you practice your creativity I think we've just got a question through uh, on on the Q and A section there, Elaine. Um, so it's, oh, it's, it just says, "Is there anything that engineers are doing for coronavirus?" Yes, yes, absolutely. I think um, obviously it's a it's a a scary, maybe a sad, definitely a sad time, but it's also quite exciting for uh, to see what all the progress that is being made by engineers, by scientists. Uh, by mathematicians even. So understanding the data behind the coronavirus is really interesting and important to see which solutions are having the best impact. Um, I mentioned the 3D printers. So um, to help with uh, personal protective equipment, PPE, uh, for the frontline workers, but also just people going about the daily business, maybe in their shops and things. Um, 3D printers can print these these face shields really quickly. And I've seen on my uh, LinkedIn pages and uh, other social media that there's so many organizations, universities doing this and sending those uh, face shields out really quickly. Um, so that's one um, thing that where I can see people in my network doing those things that the people that have the 3D printers are able to do that. Um, there's also even really creative ways of um, without a 3D printer creating PPE. So it's kind of an engineering design to come up with the A4 plastic wallet. I don't know if you've seen, you can hook it onto your glasses and then you've got a face shield. Different things like that. Maybe that might be a challenge that um, some of the listeners might want to take on. Think of ways of designing uh, face shields or face masks or PPE that you can make with things from around the house or or other um, other things that 
wait, uh, what are engineers doing during lockdown? So engineers doing lockdown or um, helping with COVID. So a lot of engineers like myself are able to continue working because we do modeling, we do computer aided design. Um, so it's all computer based and we can carry on. We can keep having the conversations with technologies like Zoom, like uh, there's many other uh, video conferencing technologies or uh, collaborative technologies. So we use something called Teams at work where we can chat to different people, where we can have collaborative boards, um, where we can all work on the same documents at the same time and we can um, do the same things that we do in the office but online now. So a lot of our work um, is not uh, is the same as it was before, just now we're doing it at home instead of being in one office. Um, and yeah, coming up with different solutions to help with COVID. So um, maybe hospital beds designs, setting up the wards in the uh, different uh, um, venues as well. So some obviously there's lots of different types of professions involved in this, uh, but engineers definitely have a part. And I've noticed that with the slowdown in traffic, um, the roads are being uh, repaired and they're working on that. Uh, we're working on the designs for electric vehicle infrastructure, charging infrastructure, so that because now we're enjoying all this clean air, where they, we want that to be the same in the future. So if we have the charging infrastructure in place, more people can buy cars, even if they live in a flat or you know, if, they, if you can't charge at home, we want people to be able to charge um, on the street or in you know, shopping centres or leisure centres or um, things like that. So we, we're making sure that the network is built and ready for um, public charging. So, um, Elaine, you just mentioned, um, obviously, the circumstances that we're in aren't nice. Um, but as far as the impact on the environment, it seems to have had a positive effect on the environment. Um, obviously, we've got a negative and a positive. So how, how would you suggest that we then sort of not going back to normal, but perhaps creating a new way of life to incorporate the, both the positives and negatives of this current situation? What would you say? What would you put your answer be to that? Yeah. Uh, definitely. I think we need to, each of us and as a collective, uh, spend some time reflecting on what are the good things that have happened. Have you been able to spend more time with family? You spent less time in a car commuting. Um, you spent, you got to enjoy the clean air. Um, there's maybe no smog. I don't, I don't know. I think people um, on this call are probably from all parts of the UK. Um, so how and what has led that to happen and how can we keep those things so previously people thought i can't work from home but now we know it's possible we know we've been forced to do it so we have done it and we now have everything in place to be able to do that so potentially um at work there could be new policies to encourage more working from home throughout the week if that is possible if uh, more family time is one of the benefits. How can we carve that out? Do we want to make that more regular? Do we want to make sure that our holidays are um, kind of protected times where we can spend time together and be uh, together with each other? Uh, in terms of the environment more broadly, can we accel accelerate some of the government policies to make sure that we keep the benefits um, of this reduced emissions from reduced traveling what we need to think about how we can make it acceptable when the lockdown is lifted to travel less and how we can encourage people to do that maybe um, some of these physical events conferences will move to webinars more because it, it's probably cheaper to run than hiring a big venue it's more accessible to people who can't travel and yeah there's many benefits that we each kind of different parts of the society we need to put our heads together to think how we can translate this um, into long-term benefits when the lockdown is lifted. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elaine. There. Um, what I want to say uh, now is 
just like you said before about kind of COVID-19 and, and coronavirus, a really good question from there. Um, I think that could be another good theme, say, for the Leaders Award, like you said about renewal, re- renewable energy as well. I think maybe coronavirus could, could, be, could be a good theme, good problem for the young engineers to solve as well. I just want to say a big thank you um, to you, Elaine, for taking time out of your day to do this today. Um, and thank you for answering those. I think they've also done some brilliant questions there today uh, from our participants. Um, so thank you, everyone else, as well. Um, just want to reiterate what Jess said um, earlier um, about this being a home project. So next steps for everyone, um, if you could try and have a go at our leaders of world competition uh, come up with lots of ideas um, i think you've been inspired by elaine today so lots of ideas i think will come from this interview um, if you haven't already to then help you with this if you register online and have access to our, lots of our resources to help you come up with lots of ideas lots of inventions get them down on paper and then next week uh, we'll have lots of other interviews as well with other engineers who can inspire you as well i'll just share my screen um, as well, if everyone can see that, let me just share it all here. Um, so if you can see lots of our other engineer interviews coming up as well, just like we've had Elaine today. Um, just another, again, big thank you to you, Elaine. I think we'll finish it there. Uh, thank you. Hope, hope, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope everyone else has enjoyed it as well, just as much as me and Jess have enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine. Um, just for um, the the listeners, really, if if you or your mums or dads or carers have have Facebook as well, we are we do stream these interviews um, live on Facebook. So if you were struggling with the with the process of the the Zoom, we do it on there as well. Um, we constantly post on our social media with updates um, of our exciting lineups like like today's um, interview with Elaine. So just keep your eye out for those um, and keep those creative juices flowing. Um, and yeah, that's a big thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.